Now, according to EcoBank Research, Nigeria's brass LNG could be facing fresh challenges as Rwanda suspends acquisition plans. And meanwhile, further delays in Ghana's gas project could cost the nation and sector an additional 340 million US dollars. Now for an outlook for the region's oil and gas space, I'm being joined by Rolake Akinkugbe, head oil and gas energy research at Ecobank Group. Now Rolake, let's take a look. Let's start out with Nigeria. Now according to your report, with the return of the bunny light grade, that Nigeria could uh, see an output uh, ri rise in the, in the month of November, despite a shortfall of 193,500 uh, million barrels per day shortfall. Uh, as a result of the Bonga field maintenance. Uh, how much of this is going to boost the uh, oil output in Nigeria? Well, I mean, bo uh, the offline uh, situation with Bonnie had obviously affected Nigeria's exports, particularly with the lifting of cargoes for Bonnie Light, which we know is one of the most demanded crude grades from Nigeria and which had attracted premium. So we're likely to see perhaps up to 200,000 barrels a day in addition back on the market primarily for Bonnie uh, from the Bonnie crude stream um, and this this is despite the fact that we've had as you mentioned 198 barrels a day shutting from Bra from uh, the um, Bonga offshore field so this essentially is likely to compensate for that currently shutting production and this is probably good news because as you would have seen and observed over the last few months uh, production had really taken a serious hit in Nigeria due to a combination of factors such as outages the continued problems we've seen with oil theft in the region and, and a slight slump in demand earlier in the first half of this year particularly from uh, buyers of crude grades coming from the West Africa region Okay, so you're saying that, uh, of course, with this uh, new additional supply on the market of the uh, bunny like crude grade, and remember also that Nigeria loses about, uh, uh, well, depends on who is reporting it, sometimes as high as 1,500 1, uh, barrels of or million uh, barrels of oil per day. You're saying that this would definitely increase revenues for the country? <coughs> Well, in terms of whether it actually leads to an increase in revenue is another thing. You must remember that this particular stream of Bonny was previously on the market, then was taken off the market, now is back on the market. So essentially, we're back to earlier levels of production. Um, and whether that feeds into an increase in revenues, it will depend on how much support there is for the Bonny crude price, which has typically commanded um, between 3 and $5 premium over the Brent crude mark. So it really depends on the extent of demand, particularly in the Asian market, for the West African light crude streams. Okay, let's quickly talk about Owando. Now, Owando uh, has suspended acquisition plans or bid for Conoco Phillips, a 17% stake in the $15 million brass LNG project. Now, of course, we know that this would create us uncertainties or uh, further uncertainty on whether LNG plants shareholders can reach a final decision. Do we know why uh, Owando is backing out on this deal or suspending it? Well, um, I mean, it's not entirely clear what their reasons are. I mean, they've been looking at raising funds for this particular acquisition for some time, actually, since earlier this year and late last year when it was announced that Conoco Phillips, uh, Phillips Limited, was selling its stake in, in Brass LNG. But when you put it into the context of the fact that the Brass LNG has failed to reach a final investment decision, which is critical for seeing the project take off, uh, the, the Oando uh, uh, halt, uh, Oando halting its acquisition, it's just one of many challenges that this particular LNG project has faced. Uh, it also raises the question of who will now seek to acquire that stake and whether the decision to withdraw from the acquisition process is primarily down to internal challenges within Orlando or is a reflection of great uncertainty around the brass LNG project. And if it is the latter, then it, it certainly raises doubts about whether investors will be attracted to brass in the future, given the fact that the project has not reached final investment decision. Certainly, I think it will become clear over the next few weeks what is really affecting this decision by Oando. We've seen in the news recently that it's, it's got increased publicity over other types of issues. Uh, maybe that is a factor. It's not entirely clear. But I think over the next few weeks and months, time will tell. But it certainly deals a blow to Nigeria's hopes of boosting liquefied <coughs> natural gas production from the country and boosting exports consequently.
Okay, Rolika, let's speculate a bit. Now, although you've said that uh, this would, uh, it, uh, it would unfold in the coming weeks, we see or how all of this plays out. Uh, but uh, are you confident that uh, LNG, the shareholders, could find a new partner? Who could this partner be? Well, if you remember a few months back, there were talks of uh, some other Japanese and Asian players coming in to bid for stakes in Brass LNG. And this would make sense, obviously, given that there's a shifting focus and trading dynamics in gas towards the Asia and the Pacific basin. So we might see some emerging market players certainly coming to bid. But much will depend on what the reason for the decision by Rwanda to halt its bid for this stake is and whether it still intends to revive this bid. If it still intends to revive this bid, then that could basically uh, exclude the potential for other players. But it certainly it means that, at least in the short to medium term, we're not going to see a final investment decision on Brass LNG. Okay, let's quickly talk. Let's just step a bit out of the West African space and look at uh, Angola. Angola is said to see an increase in output uh, to 1.74 million barrels per day due to additional cargoes from uh, BP's uh, Saturn oil field. Now, what does this mean for the country? Well, this is quite significant for the country because Angola is also planning to uh, launch a new onshore licensing round by the end of 2013. And as we know time and time again, the government in Angola has been saying they want to boost production to 2 million barrels a day by 2014. We personally think it's probably likely more in 2015 rather than 2014. Um, and, and you know they've made significant discoveries in the pre-sort layer. So altogether, things are looking relatively bright for Angola in terms of potentially catching up with Nigeria uh, as Africa's largest oil producer. Uh, we expect local companies in Angola to feature heavily in this round because it's for onshore licenses. And some of the blocks actually lie in close proximity to a Congo block in the Republic of Congo, which has seen a major discovery recently by all multinationals there. So all in all, the, the medium term outlook look for Angola's production is relatively bright and we do expect production to go closer to 1.9 million barrels a day uh, by 2014.